lesson. I'm going on a date with Jessica. Any advice? Yeah, lesson. Going out with a girl like her happens once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon? But the moon is not blue. Take her someplace nice, but not a fancy place that costs an arm and a leg. An arm? A leg? What? And remember, even if your first date goes bad, don't throw in the towel. Towel? Should I take a towel to my first date? I hope you have a great night. Break a leg. Break a leg? Jessica's leg? No, don't break her leg. Break a leg. It's an idiom. Idiom? What's an idiom? Hello, my name is Maddie from POC English and in this lesson I'm going to teach you 30 idioms that native speakers often use and that are very common. And you may hear them a lot in movies and TV series. As there are many idioms in this lesson, let's start immediately. Idiom number one, a blessing in disguise. This is my favorite idiom. Has it ever happened to you that something bad happens and then you're sad? but it turns out to be something good eventually and not bad? That is a blessing in disguise. A blessing in disguise is something that appears to be bad, but eventually turns out to be good. For example, losing my job was a blessing in disguise because it allowed me to start my own business. Initially, it was bad, but because of that, I started my own business, so it was a blessing in disguise. Idiom number two, a dime a dozen. Now, this is very nice. A dime a dozen means something that is very common and not very valuable. Because you see it a lot or you have it a lot or everyone has it, it doesn't have any particular value. For example, in this city, sushi restaurants are a dime a dozen. It means there are many sushi restaurants, sushi is very common and it is not a fancy dish. However, in some countries, sushi can be a very expensive and fancy dish. But here, it's a dime a dozen. The third idiom, which in fact is a proverb, actions speak louder than words. The meaning is very clear, right? It means what you do is more important than what you say. For example, he promised to help me move, but when the day came, he didn't show up. Actions speak louder than words. He said he would help me, but he didn't. Idiom number four, I'm all ears. Ear, ears, I'm all ears. That means I'm very interested in what you want to say and I am listening very carefully. I'm all ears. For example, tell me more about your trip to Japan. I'm all ears. It means I really want to listen to what you have to say. Idiom number five, to beat around the bush. This is very common, beat around the bush. But what does it mean? It means to avoid talking about something directly. So instead of talking about it, you beat around the bush. You talk about all these unimportant things, but you do not talk about the central important thing because it makes you perhaps feel uncomfortable. So you beat around the bush. For example, just tell me what you want to say. Don't beat around the bush. Just tell me what you want to say. Stop beating around the bush. The sixth idiom is bite the bullet. The bullet is what is inside a gun. Now, can you bite a bullet? Ow, that will hurt your teeth. To bite the bullet means to face a difficult and challenging situation in a brave way, with courage and with determination to bite the bullet. For example, I don't want to have surgery, but I know I need to bite the bullet and do it. I'm afraid of having a surgery, but I know I have to bite the bullet and do it because it's necessary. Next one is very fun. Break a leg. No, this does not mean to break someone's leg. Break a leg is a way of wishing someone good luck. Before a performance, a match, a test, an exam, you tell them break a leg instead of saying good luck. For example, break a leg. I know you will do great in the audition. Break a leg. I know you will do great in the audition. Idiom number eight, again, another very common idiom, to cost an arm and a leg. But what does that mean? 
That means to be very expensive. If something costs you an arm and a leg, it means you paid a lot for it. It was too expensive. For example, I would love to travel to Europe, but plane tickets cost an arm and a leg these days. It means plane tickets are very expensive these days. Idiom number nine, cut to the chase. Cut to the chase? What does it mean? Cut to the chase means to get to the main point or to the main issue without wasting time. Cut to the chase. For example, we don't have all day, so let's cut to the chase and talk about the budget. We don't have all day. Stop beating around the bush. We don't have all day. Let's cut to the chase and talk about the budget. Idiom number 10, easy as pie. Easy as pie, which means something very easy to do. For example, don't worry, this recipe is easy as pie. Anyone can do it. This recipe is very easy. It's easy as pie. This idiom is very similar to piece of cake. If something is a piece of cake, that is very easy to do. A uh, piece of cake, P-O-C, P-O-C English, piece of cake English. Learning English is very easy. All right, so far we have learned 10 idioms. If you're enjoying this lesson, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, click subscribe. And now let's get to idiom 11. Every cloud has a silver lining. Every cloud has a silver lining? What does it mean? This one is very similar to the first idiom of this video. What was it? Do you remember? A blessing in disguise. When you say every cloud has a silver lining, it means every bad situation can have a positive side or a positive effect. Generally, it means something good can come out of anything bad. For example, losing my job was tough, but it gave me the opportunity to start my own business. Every cloud has a silver lining. Idiom number 12, go the extra mile. This one is very lovely. You can use it in academic situations too, specifically for job interviews. But what does it mean to go the extra mile? To go the extra mile means to do more than what is expected of you. So imagine you're in a job interview and you say, I am willing to go the extra mile on each and every project. That means I am willing to work even harder than is expected of me. So it's very good to be used in business English. Next idiom, to hit the nail on the head. Now, you know what a nail is, right? It's a thin metal thing that is used in construction. Now, each nail has a head. You pick a hammer and you hit the nail on the head. That is the best place you can hit it. To hit the nail on the head as an idiom means to be very accurate and exact. For example, you hit the nail on the head with your analysis. It means your analysis was very accurate and exact. Next idiom, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Does it mean inside a nutshell? No, in a nutshell means briefly. We use it to summarize something in a few words or in a few sentences. In a nutshell, for example, can you explain the plot of the movie in a nutshell? It means can you explain it briefly? Idiom 15, it's raining cats and dogs. Well, this one is a rather old fashioned idiom, but it is still being used. So it's important to learn it. When you say it's raining cats and dogs, it doesn't mean that cats or dogs are falling. It means it is raining heavily. It's raining cats and dogs. For example, uh, it's raining cats and dogs. Don't forget to take your brolly. It's raining cats and dogs. Idiom 16. Let the cat out of the bag. What does it mean? To open the bag and let the cat out? Let the cat out of the bag? To let the cat out of the bag means to reveal a secret. For example, don't let the cat out of the bag, but I'm planning a surprise party for John. It means don't tell John, don't reveal the secret. Don't let the cat out of the bag. Shh, I'm holding a surprise party for John. Next idiom, idiom number 17, once in a blue moon. This is again very common. It's a very interesting time phrase. Once in a blue moon means rarely, hardly ever. 
almost never. I only see my cousins once in a blue moon because they live in another country. I see my cousins once in a blue moon. It means I rarely or I hardly ever see them because they live in another country. Another idiom, which is a piece of advice, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, what happens if you put all your eggs in one basket? Well, if you drop the basket or if you fall, all of your eggs will be broken. So it's not wise to put all your eggs in one basket. This idiom basically means do not spend all your time, money and energy on one thing. Don't risk it. For example, I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket and invest all my savings in one stock. A wiser choice is to buy different various stocks, not all my money in one stock. No, 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 no. I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Idiom 19, again, another proverb. Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome was not built in a day. Now, what does it mean? Rome was a very great and strong empire. When you say that great and strong empire was not built in one day, what does that mean? It means great things take time. You cannot achieve greatness in one day. You need a lot of days. Many years of hard work will lead to greatness. So if you want to achieve greatness, you need to put in a lot of hard work. For example, you won't become an expert overnight. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Or a better example, you will not learn English with one video. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. It means if you want to improve your English, it cannot happen overnight with one lesson, one video, or one book. And idiom number 20, see eye to eye with someone. If you see eye to eye with someone, it means you agree with them. For example, we don't always see eye to eye, but we can still work together. We don't always see eye to eye. It means we don't always agree with each other, but we can work together. Okay, so far we have learned 20 amazing idioms. 10 more idioms to go. But before that, let me tell you something. Do you want to have the summary of this lesson and all my YouTube lessons in the form of a PDF file? Then you can download my ultimate English book. This book has more than 400 pages of all of the lesson summaries of all of my YouTube videos. And great news for my YouTube subscribers, this book is for free. But how can you get it? Simply click on the link above my head, go to my website, type in your name, email address, click download. You will receive the download link in your inbox. And enjoy! Let's get back to the lesson, idiom number 21. Spill the beans. Well, to spill the beans, what does it mean? It means to reveal a secret. Wait, we had another idiom with this meaning, to reveal a secret. Ah, to let the cat out of the bag. So they are synonymous, to let the cat out of the bag or to spill the beans. For example, I can't believe you spilled the beans about my surprise party. I cannot believe that you spilled the beans. I can't believe that you revealed my secret. You ruined my surprise birthday party. Another idiom, which is very common, take a rain check. To take a rain check, what does it mean? To take a rain check means to cancel a plan or an invitation or an arrangement. Now remember, this is informal, so we often use it with our friends. Imagine that I want to go to the movies with a friend of mine. He or she comes and tells me to get ready. And I say, uh, I, I have a lot to do. Mind if I take a rain check? Means mind if I cancel this plan? Next idiom, the ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. What does it mean? When the ball is in your court, it means it's your turn to play. The ball is in your court means it is your turn to make a decision or to take an action. For example, I've given you all the information you need. Now, the ball is in your court. It means my part is over and now it is your turn to take action. The ball is in your court. Idiom number 24. Again, another proverb. Early bird catches the worm. Early bird catches the worm. But what does it mean? Well, imagine there is a worm and there are many birds who want to catch it. Which of the birds will be successful? The early bird. 
This proverb or this idiom means that in order to be successful, you must act quickly. You must be early. For example, if you want to get ahead, remember that the early bird catches the worm. It means remember that you have to be quick about what you want to do. Another idiom, which is very common, and you will hear native speakers or even movies and TV series talk about it a lot, is the elephant in the room. But the elephant in the room, it means there is an elephant here? No. What does it mean? The elephant in the room means an obvious issue or an obvious problem that everyone in a room knows about, but no one talks about. Imagine a company has budget problems and now there is the meeting of the board. In that meeting, nobody talks about the budget problem. So the chairman says, we need to address the elephant in the room and talk about our budget problems. We need to talk about that thing that you all know, but nobody's willing to talk about the elephant in the room. Another interesting idiom, idiom 26, the whole nine yards. This is an American idiom, the whole nine yards. But what does it mean? The whole nine yards means everything that is available, everything that you have or you can give. That is the whole nine yards. How can you use it in a sentence? Look at this example. I'm going all out for the party. Decoration, food, music, the whole nine yards. It means for this party, I want to do everything I can because it is a birthday party for my partner. So I want to be the best. Therefore, I'm going all out in decorations, in food, in music, the whole nine yards, everything I have, everything that is available, the whole nine yards. Another idiom, which is lovely and is very useful to talk about friendship and relationship through thick and thin. Through thick and thin, what does it mean? It means to support someone or to be with someone no matter what happens, no matter how difficult or easy the situation is. That is the meaning of friendship, right? Friends stick together through thick and thin. It means no matter how easy or difficult the situation gets, I, as your friend, will be with you through thick and thin. Another interesting idiom, throw in the towel. Well, the towel is something we use to dry our hands or face or our body after taking a shower or after washing it. But to throw in the towel, what does it mean? It means to give up about something, to surrender, to no longer try, throw in the towel. But how can you use it? Look at this example. I've been trying to fix this computer all day, but I think I need to throw in the towel. I can't do it. It means I cannot fix the computer after trying so hard. So I'm going to give up. I'm going to throw in the towel. Idiom number 29. We're almost getting to the end of this lesson. Now, this idiom is again very useful. It's kind of an advice and a proverb. Don't judge a book by its cover. What does it mean? This idiom means do not judge somebody only by their appearance. Maybe you see someone who doesn't look good or who doesn't look clean or who doesn't look educated enough. But it turns out that that person is a very smart, bright, intelligent person. So you should not judge a person by his or her appearance. Do not judge a book by its cover. For example, don't underestimate him because he looks young. You cannot judge a book by its cover. He looks young and you may think that he is not suitable for this job because he doesn't have a lot of experience, but don't judge a book by its cover. He is a very bright person. And finally, the last idiom of this lesson, hit the jackpot. To hit the jackpot, what does it mean? It means to have a lucky break, to be very lucky. In one case, for example, I can't believe I won the lottery. I hit the jackpot. I can't believe it. I won the lottery. I hit the jackpot. It means I was very lucky in that specific case. And that's it, guys. I hope you have taken notes of all the idioms, the example sentences and the meaning of the idioms. Don't forget to practice. See ya.